Hey there, I'm Bill Shirk, the man about the woods. Check out the brand spanking new 2012 Due North Outdoors Rapid Marine Line. Lund just reintroduced the 1875 Pro V model. This is a benchmark for hardcore anglers and tournament fishing. But get this, Lund figured out a way to make this a bit of a family boat too. Let's check it out. Now Pro V's continue to be Lund's top of the line series of boats and much of that has to do with the Pro V's hull design. Pro V's use these IPS2 hulls without getting too complex. IPS2 hulls are designed to take a true pounding on big water. Believe me on that. They have double riveted seams, the same treatment commercial jets get. They also have tough I-beam construction and multiple straights with tight tolerances. The end result, a faster boat, a drier ride, and much better boat control, which is a biggie for me. In the 1875, I'm able to hop up front and use the Minn Kota when I want to move around and I'm bass fishing or working a weed line for walleyes. Now, when the weather kicks up, all I have to do is jump here into the back and I get to the back trolling. With that IPS2 hull and that pronounced keel, I'm able to hold this boat in high wind and rough water right over the top of the fish. Wall anglers know the ability to do that makes or breaks a boat. All right, so all the boats in the Pro V series are loaded with features, almost too many to talk about. But in the 1875, I'll start up front with the storage. Lund figured out a way to stick storage in every nook and cranny of this boat. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Cargo nets on both sides. Storage way up there in the bow. Big lids with deep canisters to hold all your baits. Heck, they even figured out a way to get a live well up front and in back an 18 gallon prolonged live well back there. Okay, so what about rod storage? Well, in the center console of the 1875, you can fit seven rods. I get seven footers in there. For all my longer rods, they go here on the side. I can probably get a half a dozen rods in there comfortably. That's where all my musky stuff goes. Okay, some more cool storage. In the console of all these boats, they've got these really neat Pro-V drawers. Of course, I have more baits on this side. Over here, I keep all the tools I might need while I'm out in the boat. Behind the console, you've also got one, two, three, four, five pedestals for seats. And this is where Lund made a tournament fishing boat into a really cool family boat. Let me show you. Remember that extended casting platform that they now have? Watch this. At the end of the day when I'm done fishing, I flip this up and pop up the seats. Now, all of a sudden, your boat's ready for a ride with the family, the afternoon cruise. Again, with Pro V's, it's all about fit and finish. The boat has a newly redesigned driver's side console over here, a big old glove box for all your wife's stuff, and probably my favorite part of the boat right here, the ProTrack system. They run up and down both sides of the gunnels, and they allow you to mount these little brackets. You can put anything on them. And I like to use the brackets for all my rod holders. Now, the 2012 boat is loaded down with electronics a set of Hummingbird 900 series GPS and sonar units. And believe me, they do some pretty incredible things. Heck, you take your favorite mapping chip and pop it on in, let the maps load, and all of a sudden, all of your lakes have one foot contour showing you everything on the bottom, everything you need to know as an angler. But really, Hummingbird's big chunk of technology is something called side imaging. Let me show it to you. Switch to it right here. Essentially, I can look out 360 feet off both sides of the boat and get real-time information. Like right now, we're going under this bridge. Watch what it shows me here as we go underneath. Look, right there, I can see the piling over here and the piling over here. And look at that, a pile of rocks right there. I bet there are fish hiding. It shows you sonar in real time. Amazing technology. Now, Rapid Marine rigged this year's boat with that monster back there. Mercury's 200 horsepower four-stroke Verado. It is quite the machine. Think performance. This boat will do 50 miles an hour with a full 40 gallons of gas, all the gear you can handle, and a couple of anglers. That lightning fast performance. Add to that either 24 or 36 volt Minn Kota's in the front and the back. You've got complete control of this Pro-V in any sort of weather condition.
Lund's new Pro V's, just another part of the Lund legacy. The best built, the best looking, the best performing boats on the water. When are you gonna join the team? Get yourself a Pro V. I'm Bill Shirk and I'll see you on the water. Today's Do North Insider is presented by Rapid Marine. Hey there, Bill Shirk, the man about the woods here. You know, fishing electronics have become a huge part of the fishing game with a lot of the units costing over $2,000 a piece. They're high tech and they work really well, but you can take care of them the right way and a wrong way. You know, the big question I get is how do you clean the screen when you get all those little water spots on it? There is a right way to do it. A lot of people just go for the Windex, but the key is to look for something with vinegar, not ammonia. Got it? Ammonia, if you use it, it'll actually take the protective coating off the screen. A lot of guys will use spray or they'll just take a bottle of vinegar and mix it with a little water and clean it. The other key, right here, you got to use a lens towel of some sort. Don't grab the paper towel because paper towels will actually scratch your screen. All you got to do is give it a little spray with that vinegar based cleaner, give it a rub, water spots are gone and your electronics look brand new. Today's Do North Insider is presented by Rapid Marine. Okay, so you spend all this money on a fancy fishing boat, but really people don't take the time to maintain their motors. What am I talking about? Well, every time I'm around the boat, I do two things. Number one, the motor. Simply pull off the cowl and check the oil every time. It'll take you 10 seconds, and trust me, it'll save headaches down the road. The other thing, every time I put gasoline in the boat, I put a fuel stabilizer in too. It's a rule of thumb for me. With all the fancy motors and the small parts, stabilizer protects the gas and it protects your motor. Take a little bit of time to do some daily maintenance and your boat's going to run all season long. Today's Do North Insider is presented by Rapid Marine Group. If you spend enough time in the boat, you know stuff gets wet, whether it's rain coming down or waves crashing over in rough weather. I want you to do something next time that happens to you. At the end of the day, when I go home, put the boat away. I literally open every single bin inside the boat. I do it for a couple of reasons. Number one, it dries everything out, but more importantly, live wells, you know that stink you tend to get over time? If you just open up the live well at the end of the day and let it dry out, number one, your gear stays clean and you avoid the stink in the live well. 